Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Willett. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Searching for the inventor of Gothic architecture, Abbot Suger. While the term Romanesque is a descriptive one, the designation Gothic was an insult delivered centuries later by Renaissance critics who disparaged the look of the Goths, a barbarian tribe in the elaborate Gothic cathedrals. The Renaissance, like all new societies, needed to distinguish itself and its recovery of classical forms as superior to the non-classical all that is not derived from Greece or Rome. True, the Gothic style in architecture was local, indigenous, invented in France by the abbot of Saint-Denis, Abbot Suger. Saint-Denis was the royal church of kings. Unlike the medieval climate hot and dry, the climate of northern Europe was cold and dark. Rather than closing the walls against the heat, as in Italy, Northern cathedrals needed to open the walls and allow for windows. The problem was the sheer mass of the heavy cathedrals. The solution to supporting the walls was the so-called Gothic arch, or pointed arch, in which two round Roman arches intersected, formed a point, and distributed the weight outward and down. The second solution was an additional external support or the flying buttress seen at Chartres and Notre Dame in France. Clearly, the art stars of the Gothic era were the proto-engineers and architects and builders and visionaries like Abbot Suger, who thought that the light streaming through the new windows was light coming from God. While the builders invented the technology to make these buildings taller, higher, safer, it was the community that contributed the funds and the labor, and the church set the visual program. Each cathedral had its own theme or body of knowledge it had to convey to the faithful. An illiterate society had to be taught basic Christian doctrines and the well-known stories from the Bible. Services were conducted in Latin, the original language of the church, but the congregation spoke a local vernacular. Therefore, the role of art in society was to educate the people, and the role of the artist was to create a visual language that could symbolize and tell a story in a culture that was illiterate and based on oral traditions. The church became the Bible of the poor. The Gothic cathedral, with its soaring height, symbolized the city of Jerusalem and the glory of God. Spires reached to the heavens, stained glass windows, as Abbot Suger had planned, allowed the light of God to pour in, dappled in color. Any cathedral site would have been a beehive of artistic activity. Art was needed on all external surfaces. From the first approach to the cathedral, the pilgrim would be met by a challenging body of information, a dazzling display of knowledge conveyed through complex portal sculpture. Inside, the lessons continued via the stained glass windows and the elaborate stories they told. Although nearly invisible today, the interiors were painted and hung with banners and tapestries, now vanished. Religious services opened with a grand procession down the nave aisle, and the clergy marched in wearing magnificent garments, priests wearing the craft made by talented women in convents, the only place where women were encouraged to make art. Centuries later, the medieval era would be looked upon as a golden age of craft, the high point for artisans. The 19th century artist William Morris yearned to return to the time when art and craft were one, when the artist dedicated his or her craft and artistry to God. Legend has it that these humble, nameless artists were so dedicated to their art that hidden corners of cathedrals contain small carvings 
that only God could see.